So these photos and videos can possibly prove time travel exists. Let's check them out. The Morberly Jourdain Incident The year was 1901. In the Palace of Versailles in France were two English women. Charlotte Ann Moberly and Eleanor Jourdain were on vacation and decided to visit the famous palace. But it wasn't the grandeur of Versailles that would capture their attention that day. It was a time leap. After touring the main palace, the duo decided to visit the Petit Trianon, a smaller chateau on the grounds, once favored by Queen Marie Antoinette. But as they strolled through the gardens, the atmosphere seemed to change. The surroundings felt eerie, and there was a heavy, oppressing air. The women began to see people dressed in outdated late 18th century clothing. They saw a woman sketching who bore a striking resemblance to Marie Antoinette herself. There were other figures too, a man with a pockmarked face, another man in a hat who seemed to disappear, and some gardeners who looked out of place. Confused and unnerved, Moberly and Jourdain quickly left the gardens, feeling like they'd stumbled upon a scene from the past. In England, both women discussed their experiences and realized they had shared the same eerie observations. They began to research, delving deep into the history of Versailles and the Petit Trianon. Their findings and personal accounts were compiled into a book titled An Adventure, published in 1911. Many believe that Moberly and Jourdain had unwittingly traveled back in time to the days of the French Revolution, witnessing scenes from Marie Antoinette's life. Others suggest they might have experienced a time slip or glimpsed a parallel dimension. The incident stirred debate among scholars, historians, and the general public. Some argued that the women might have mistakenly encountered a historical reenactment, or perhaps even a themed party. But I feel like that every time I go to sleep and dream. I feel like that, man. I feel like I'm time traveling. Now, maybe the weird ones not so much, but the other ones, man, I just feel like either I'm in the future or I'm in the past. And I think more so when I think I'm in the past is because I may be reuniting with a loved one. My mom passed away, so if I see her in my dreams, I'm thinking that's past. You know what I mean? I'm thinking that's something from the past, and that's how I associate that sort of time travel or me tapping into that parallel universe where my mom could possibly still exist in that universe and I'm interacting with her. But it's some kind of way, has to, to me, I think has to be attached. Time travel has to be attached to a dream of some sort or my dreams. That's what I think. But for many, the sheer detail behind this experience is enough proof that the two ladies really did travel through time. Number three, gentlemen answering a call. Now this photograph seems to surface around the internet regularly. This black and white photo shows a man leaning against a shop amidst a bustling street in the 19th. Time travel is always... Footage from 1938 unearthed online has offered proof that time travel is real, according to some commentators. In a film clip of people walking towards the camera, one young woman can be seen holding something to the side of her head. Conspiracy theorists claim that the woman has been caught on film chatting on a mobile phone decades before the technology was ever invented. Now, only thing I could possibly think with that would be satellite phone, maybe. But if you recall, the phones back then weren't like thin and skinny. Nah, they were thick phones back then. Even like the first ones were probably about that thick and you held it. And it was probably about that high and had that long antenna from it. You remember? You hold that up. It, it looked like a, a satellite phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that being like that, that, that's what makes me be like, you know what? They could be on to something saying that, you know what I mean? Time travel was in this photo. The woman could be seen chatting as she walks in the crowd of people with the device clamped to the side of her head with one hand. She then lowers it before the film clip ends. As the woman clad in stylish 30s dress lowers the object from air, it can be seen as a dark, hand-sized item, the same dimensions as a modern mobile phone. The mystery deepens when one YouTuber came forward claiming the woman in the shot was their great-grandmother, as she was in fact using a mobile phone. According to YouTuber user Planet Check, the divide is an experimental wireless phone developed by industrial giant DuPont at their factory in Massachusetts. She says, the lady you see is my great grandmother, Gertrude Jones. She was 17 years old. I asked her about this video and she remembers it quite clearly. 
She says DuPont had a telephone communications section in the factory. They were experimenting with wireless telephones. Gertrude and five other women were given these wireless phones to test out for a week. Gertrude is talking to one of the scientists holding another wireless phone who is off to her right as she walks by. It comes after bizarre claims that a picture from 350 years ago also contains a mobile phone. The picture, the work of Dutch painter Peter de Hoosh showing a quaint domestic scene is so convincing even Apple's CEO seemingly thinks it shows an iPhone. An iPhone shows an iPhone. They don't do anything for some for free marketing or, or some type of marketing, won't they? <laughs> Attach themselves to any type of way. It's genius in a sense, but come on. That was the iPhone from back in the day. Stop it. Now, one thing we can say for sure that this photo is definitely older just by the name. Y'all heard the lady name? That's why I kind of smiled a little bit when I heard the name. You don't hear names like that no more. Gertrude. Huh? Gertrude? Oh, my God. Somebody named their kid that these days, or is somebody gonna do it now, just out of spite. But you, you just don't hear that name anymore. Now, the other thing we can look at, the photo. Let's go back to the photo. And the other thing we could logically point to and say, okay, how can this photo possibly be Photoshopped? How could they have possibly or potentially done something here? Maybe something with her arm, maybe that's not her arm or something like that. It do look kind of, Schwoe, like she been, you know what I mean? Curling, doing some curls or something like that. But uh, that that's the only stretch I could possibly lend towards to say, okay, if we want to poke holes in this, maybe we can find somebody to analyze this and see if it's possibly Photoshopped or something like that. Other than that, maybe this story is true and this was them testing out cell phones back then. I don't know. Interesting though. Yeah, I, I, I like time travel better, no cell phone. 118. In the video, he says that he's actually one of the first people to ever use time travel technology as part of a top secret CIA mission in 1981. He goes on to say that a group of unnamed people were looking for him and that he was living in hiding. Among other things, Smith claims that by the mid 21st century it's become widely known to the public that intelligent alien life exists. He goes on to say that they've been visiting Earth for a long time and that the government has been keeping it a secret. He also says that while walking around in the year 2118, he came across a statue of a man named Janu Oliver Beck, who he later found out would become President of the United States and is somehow assassinated. At the end of the interview, Smith reaches into his jacket and produces a photo of a city he claims he took while visiting the year 2118. He then mentions that the reason the image is slightly distorted is due to the time travel process. In 2118, in the I don't know, he gives off a weird vibe though. Definitely looking at him, something just, something's not right. Something's not right. Maybe traveling back and forth in time caused him to look like that, but it's giving me some type of weird, creepy, paranormal extraterrestrial vibes. We could be staring at an alien right now and don't even know it. You know what I mean? And another thing they said, you know, talking about the aliens and the government, what if that's the case too? What if the reason why they're being secretive is because one of the spacecrafts that they should they they happen to recover has the ability to travel back in time and they've been doing that. See, this is this this is what it does to to us. If they don't come out and give us information or do or let us in on on what's going on or give us a peek behind the curtain then we're forced to formulate our own opinions on what's going on and look at what we're doing. Now I'm looking at you saying, okay, you possibly got that spacecraft, which could be some type of time travel device as well. Maybe on a switchboard inside of the spacecraft, you could hit a button and travel back or forward in time. And that spacecraft is designed to protect you as you're doing that. Who's to say I'm lying? Who's to say I'm wrong? without the information. So tell us something. Let us behind the curtain. Is this 1930s painting evidence of time travel? This work is a famous painting from 1937, which was named Mr. Pynchon and the Selling of Springfield. 
At first glance, it doesn't reveal anything too unusual. It shows a scene from colonial times as an Indian sits in a boat and looks like he's having a good time. It looks like he's probably about to transport a large load of cargo in his boat. But what is he looking at? It can hardly be denied that the object in his hands looks like a smartphone. I was just about to say that thing looks like a cell phone, bro. How does everybody in older photos look like they have a cell phone? We even saw the one with, with Joe Rogan where it looked it like somebody was wearing a watch. Fam, we may need to step back and think about what we think about the past or what our idea of the past was. And I said this the other day, maybe they were way more advanced than we give them credit, than we think. Maybe we've been being lied to this entire time thinking that, you know what I mean? We picked up and took it further than they did. Maybe they took it way further than we did. And we're behind. It had to look like a cell phone. I was thinking that same thing looking at that. Let's keep going. That the object in his hands looks like a smartphone. The dark spot on the back even looks like the lens of the camera. Though this would be impossible, right? What is the man holding in his hand? A stone tablet or a kind of sculpture? Maybe even a compass? It's too difficult to say for sure, but theories have been running wild since this painting debuted online several years ago, especially since he's the only person with an object like this. All the other Indians in the area are staring around, waiting to depart. Is this truly a time traveler with a smartphone? Let us know what you think in the comments. Like, I got so many questions, bro. <laughs> Seriously, they might be silly questions, but I'm like, you know what I mean? Who was he with? Did he have a contract? No contract. What type of cell plan did he get? You know what I mean? Was this the time during when you had to buy minutes and then the weekends was free and you was worried about your anytime minutes and your rollover minutes and all of that type of stuff? Who was he calling? You know, who was he like? I have so many questions, silly questions. We could all think this stuff is silly, but it could all be quite possible at the same time. Think about it. Maybe we need to unlearn everything we've come to know or think about the past and start picturing them as like us. They figured it out. May not be exactly in the same vein as us, but it may be that parallel to us. Their cell phone might have been different. Maybe they didn't have text messages and, and, and Instagram and all of these different things on it. Maybe their cell phone did something else. Maybe it told them weather patterns or different astrology information or, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it did that. Maybe our version of the cell phone was different than their version. Who knows? That's why we got to continue to discover things and figure out, bro. We need to find that cell phone. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. Sounds crazy. I sound crazy saying it, hearing it come out my mouth, but we need to find that cell phone. On November 2nd, 2000, when a mysterious user known as Time Travel Zero or John Teeter appeared on the Coast to Coast and Time Travel forums, this man burst onto the scene, claiming to be a military time traveler hailing from the distant future 2036. His extraordinary narrative captivated the online community, sparking curiosity and skepticism. According to Titor, he was in the year 2000 on a personal layover before embarking on a daring journey to the year 1975. His purpose was to retrieve an IBM 5100 computer, a seemingly ordinary piece of technology, yet one that held the key to fixing critical legacy system errors resulting from a devastating virus in his future timeline of 2036. Amidst the discussion threads, John Titor openly shared intricate details about time travel technology, offering compelling insights into the components required to construct a time machine. To avid fans of science fiction, it was like witnessing the workings of a real lifetime traveler's craft, shrouded in an aura of secrecy. Beyond the technicalities, Titor revealed glimpses of a future that awaited humanity, warning that the events he foretold were not set in stone due to the existence of alternate timelines. He talked of a looming civil war, triggered in 2005 over issues of order and rights, eventually escalating into a full-blown crisis by 2008. This devastating conflict, 
would rend the United States into five separate regions, each with its own distinct ambitions. The culmination would be a short yet disastrous nuclear World War III, leaving a scarred nation with Omaha, Nebraska as its new capital. As time unfolded, events diverged from the trajectory Teeter had envisioned. The prophecies he shared did not materialize as expected, leading some to question the authenticity of his claims. Supporters of Titor, however, cited the many worlds theory, suggesting that his revelations may have created alternative realities where these events unfolded. John Titor's presence on the internet was temporary, lasting only four months, yet his impact was profound. He garnered an avid following, with countless individuals hanging on to his every word, hoping to unlock the secrets of time and destiny. Intriguingly, despite his influence and fame within the online realm, Titor's identity remained covered in shadow. Efforts to track him down went nowhere, and the trail seemed to grow colder with each passing year. I think you gotta tell me a little more than for me to believe you, for me to really like be all in. You gotta tell me more than anybody I think can kind of predict a war or something like that, conflict happening. That's that's just inevitable. If you you live long enough and you be around and you pay attention to what's going on, you know, ever so often one is going to happen. OK, cool. What else you got? You know what I mean? Build on this whole you coming back and needing these computers and stuff like that. What for? Tell me that. Bridge that in some kind of way and tell me how is that possible and what you need it for and stuff like that. Do something like that. But war, that's not enough for me to be sold. You got to do more than that. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm saying anybody could pre could predict that. They even did that back then. They even it was a book that even predicted something like the Titanic happening. Remember, it, it's all kind of different things that happened in time that was able to predict some things. Now, in that book, it was able to predict a lot of things and and close. It was it was very very close in its prediction. So. That's different, but this here, eh, I need a little more than that. Just saying. Evidence that time travel exists, part one. A man named John Teeter popped up on an internet forum in November of 2000 and claimed he was a time traveler from the year 2036. He said people were recovering from World War III in his time, so we had to go back to 1975 to get this secret function off this IBM computer that could translate languages because most of their computers and communication systems are gone. IBM didn't even tell people about this function until 2004, and it's been there since 1975. Some people believe that what he did back in 1975 caused Y2K not to happen, and that's why he was back in 2000. He said his time machine was about 500 pounds it could fit in a suitcase and it had to be moved by car. Andy posted a picture of what he claimed to be a diagram of his time machine and people have even put rewards out if anyone could figure it out. He interacted a lot with people on the forums and would answer any questions in detail on what anyone asked. In 2000 he said we needed to learn how to manage the temperature on our spacecrafts and in 2003 the Columbia Space Shuttle blew up because it got too hot. He also claimed oh. that Stephen Hawking would admit that the biggest mistake in his career was being wrong about how black holes work and he did. He also did claim things that didn't come true but there's so much more information on this it's insane. Evidence that time travel I wonder if this is the same guy. The reason why I say that is because the connection of that IBM computer. Not a whole lot of people are coming back here and just inquiring about IBM computers and needing a bulk of them for some reason. That's, that stands out to me. You know what I mean? Then the whole thing with the spacecraft and changing the temperatures and stuff like that. And then you have something like that happen. Like, I, that's why I'm just not so quick to write somebody off. But at the same time, you know what I mean? We should take into account what they say. Look into it, at least. Don't just quickly write them off. Be on some Final Destination stuff that, do that dude told him on the movie. He said, get off this, I gotta get off this plane. And some people followed him, some people didn't. We all know what happened next, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want them IBM computers for? Y'all remember IBM computers? And why did, if IBM Noodle, why did they keep that to themselves? That's another question. I think about that. Is there someone working on time machines yeah. right now? There's got to be, right? Well, there's a guy named Ronald Millett. I think he's out of the University of Connecticut, if you Google this. And he's got the craziest Spider-Man character uh, origin story. His father died, and he became obsessed with time travel because he wanted to go back in time and save his father. So he became a professor studying time travel and he came up with a workable model of a time machine but it requires immense immense power that's him 
Ron Millette built a device that illustrates the principles he believes could be used to build a time machine. <clears throat> but he was one of the people that came up with the first, one of the first people to come up with the realiz realization uh, or the revelation that once that time machine was invented, oh, that died from in Vietnam. then, yeah. Uh, it's, but it's, I mean, it is really like a comic book superhero sort of uh, origin story, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a great origin yeah. story. Yeah. So this guy has become obsessed and has been working on it for decades. And they think they have a working model of, uh, you know, like at least a theoretical model of a time machine. But it just requires, like, the power of the sun. It requires immense power. I, think about that. Is there someone... Who's, who's testing it? Would y'all test out? Who would line up to be the first to test out a time machine? Nah, fam. Nah, fam. I need to see it work several times. I need to see y'all update it. I need to see y'all create multiple of them before I even think about it. Because what's the fear? It sends you back in time or forward in time, but then you can't figure out a way to get back and you're stuck there. <laughs> you're stuck there. Man, what's the luck you go back to the time where dinosaurs are roaming and you just standing around trying to get this thing to work before this T-Rex shows up? Or you send it forward in time and you're like, you're just out of place. Everything is, is robotic, AI-driven, and there's no way. You, you stand out like a sore thumb. There's no way you're going to survive this. They're going to get you. You know what I mean? But, dang, does anybody know what episode this is? I want to know that guy's name. I want to look into that. Because this, this lets us know that they've been really working on it. And they could possibly have a model. And they possibly could be testing this. You think they're going to tell us when they start human trials testing it? Or animals? You know they've probably already been doing animal trials. That's where they start first. They don't even let us know about those. This is, this is, like he said, this is like superhero-esque, how it started and where it is now. And you know that that drove him. He probably had that drive to the point where it pushed him to figure it out. If somebody has that motivation, they'll figure it out. The object was to produce a field of invisibility for the ship. And I might point out in 1940, there were very poor radar systems. The technology also began about 1931 for radar, but we didn't have anything like a really sophisticated radar system in 1940, so they were concerned about ship invisibility. A special crew was chosen, the Eldridge was taken off the drawing board, and the equipment was designed to fit into it with the two main generators and the forward hold, number two gun turret. And as you saw there, the tests, two of them were conducted. The first one, both tests with a, an experimental crew, specially chosen. First one was 22 July 1943, in which they achieved in radar as well as optical invisibility. It was very successful in terms of the hardware. But they had a problem with personnel, being disoriented, nauseous, uh, totally mentally destabilized, if you will. So when the ship was returned to dockside after an approximate 20 minute, 20 minute test at uh, 1,000 hours in the morning, a new crew was assigned. Uh, Neumann knew he had a very serious problem. He, he had listened to us eventually that there was a problem, and he knew it then. Went to the Navy for an extension on time. The Navy said, no way. There's a war on. Do what you have to do to make it work, but you have a deadline, drop dead date, 12 August 1943. If you can't make that date, forget it. We were all working furiously around the clock came the date, everything was ready, we thought, and we went out in the harbor. Actually, my brother and I were very apprehensive. So we were given the radio command as per the movie, turned the equipment on for about 70 seconds to the outside observers. Everything appeared to be functioning correctly. Radar invisibility was achieved. There was no true optical invisibility, though there was a great haze of fog, greenish in color. And then after about 70 seconds, the ship disappeared completely. As the movie indicated, on board, there was a great deal of problems. We realized from the outset that something was wrong, seriously wrong. And when everything started to nearly explode around us, we tried to shut the equipment off, found the handles frozen. We could not shut it off. Mm. We got zapped. We decided the only way out was outside. 
and we both simultaneously got the idea, let's jump overboard and jump in the bay and swim ashore. We jumped overboard all right. We did not wind up in the bay. We wound up on shore at Montauk, Long Island, inside the perimeter of a military base at Montauk, which was then known as Fort Hero and was the other terminal of this experiment known as the Philadelphia uh, Phoenix Project, at approximately 2 a.m. in the morning, and a very bright light was shining down on us. We felt this fence in back of us. We didn't know where we were or what had happened. A very, very bright spotlight and this noisy thing overhead, a helicopter. What did we know about helicopters? Sikorsky was still working on them in 43. MPs grabbed us, took us down below into one of the labs, and we were confronted by Dr. Van Neumann, an old man. He says, I am Dr. Van Neumann. We've been expecting you. And he says, you who? He says, you're a doctor. We, I'm, we have been expecting you. I am Dr. Van Neumann. He eventually convinced us of the fact, and of course, looking around there, seeing video displays, terminals, equipment like we had never seen, we knew something was wrong. He told us briefly, we know what has happened. The two experiments have locked up. We've created a huge hole in hyperspace. The Eldridge is in it. You have to go back and smash the equipment and return that ship to its normal place. He said, we can do this here. The Phoenix Project did achieve total control of time and space. The object was to produce. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? That's that's what you, you the whole time you was watching this, you was like, yo, do I believe this? You you were warring with yourself in your mind, wondering whether or not you believe that. It's like the moon landing. Yeah, that's what you think back to right now. Do I believe this ship was designed and, and they tried to, not design, but they tried to make this ship disappear and possibly created some type of time travel and went either forward in time, it seems like. I don't, I don't put it past them, bro. I don't, I don't, man. Trying to go through great lengths. War tactics, different things they were trying to do to gain leverage, the upper hand. So I totally believe somebody came up with the idea of making a ship invisible and possibly stumbled upon something else. <laughs> Listen, man, y'all can say it's lies. You can say it's not true. You can say whatever. But how much proof do you have? You got about as much as proof as I do. So it's a 50-50 chance. I live with those odds. Some same odds in Vegas, baby. <laughs> That's what you get on, sir, on, on the roulette table when you play red or black. Those odds. So, listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section and let me know what you thought of this video here. Crazy. Stay around and stay tuned, man. Leave a like. Till next one, I'm gone.